The art of dressing begins with the corset. A corset forms or deforms the figure, makes or mars the fit of the bodice, and gives the individual what the lady has and what the dowdy lacks. Style. So in today's video, you can watch me make a mock-up of a Victorian era corset. And I actually got the pattern for this corset from an Etsy shop called Atelier Silk Corsets. <laughs> Pretty sure I butchered that. I'll put a link in the description down below so you can actually go check out her shop yourself. I have been very impressed with what I've seen on her shop and from what I've seen of this pattern. She actually uses her collection of antique corsets to create these patterns. Um, she includes details about the methods of construction, what materials were used in the construction, wherever she possibly can, keeping in mind that some of these corsets did have the bones removed from them or other things changed later on down the line before she got her hands on them. She does keep all of them on hand, though. So in case you have any questions about the pattern, she can actually just go look at the physical thing and give you the information. Which, honestly, I can't imagine there'd be many questions you'd have to ask her about the pattern, because after you buy the pattern, she also sends you a boatload of photos covering tons of details on the interior and exterior of these corsets, so you can really get to see how they were created. But still, if you can't figure out something between the plethora of photos, then you can just ask her. The details aren't on the pattern already, and she will respond very quickly. I have been quite impressed. Now, after going through her Etsy shop and looking at the different measurements of the different corsets, I decided to go with her Reference S corset, as the measurements are nearly identical to my own, with the exception of the waist being slightly smaller, and that mainly has to do with a little weight I've put on lately. And once that weight is gone, the waist measurement is almost going to be identical to my natural measurement anyways. So I figured I would just use this one as there shouldn't be a whole lot of modification in theory <laughs> needed. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but she has dated her reference S to the last like quarter of the 1800s. But she does have patterns available dating through the 1700s. Her oldest one that I have found on her website dates from that last quarter of the 1700s, and I am super excited to get my hands on that pattern somewhere down the line and try my hand. So look forward to that in the future video. So to get back on point for today's video, <laughs> Um, I'm actually going to modify the pattern a little bit. The original garment is constructed out of two layers of herringbone cotille, and the boning channels are simply sandwiched in between those two layers. As I want to make this out of a single layer, that means I'm going to need exterior boning channels. Additionally, I'm going to need to modify the seam allowances a little bit to make sure that the method of construction still works as well as make some adjustments in the front and back closures, just to make sure that I can do that <laughs> correctly, as I won't have two layers of cotille to sandwich all of the bones and the uh, busk and things in, I will have to modify the pattern. Also, because the boning that I'm going to be using, which is synthetic whale boning, is going to be slightly smaller than what we believe the original pieces of boning were in the garment, this means I'm going to have to adjust the boning channel placements a little bit so they don't interfere with the seams. This also means that if you see images of me in this at the end, and there are places where the boning channels are not 
identical on one half of the corset versus the other, this is intentional. I am trying out different placements based on the original placement to figure out what is more comfortable, if it makes a difference. So in the final version, I can make sure I have the bones in the optimal place for my body. <laughs> um, I think that's pretty much all of the alterations I will be making in this original mock-up. With any luck, I won't need to do more than one mock-up, though it's very likely I will, so wish me luck. And let's get into the video! I figured while I showed you the creation of this corset mock-up, we could chat a bit about corsets in general. And I first wanted to touch on that excerpt I read at the beginning of the video. It's actually from The Morning Call, published April 15th, 1894. The article in question was titled, Fit of Corsets. Julia Jennings gives good advice on dressy gracefulness. And Jennings goes on to echo a sentiment that I think many modern corseteers can really empathize with when she claims, Few women know how to buy a corset, or how to wear it when they get it. In the first place, the corset should fit. This is absolutely essential. Perfectly fitting corsets are the exception. Beautifully fitting boots and shoes are the rule. In one instance, goods are tried on and no purchase is made until the right size is provided. In the other, a corset is selected from one measurement the goods are paid for, taken home, and worn, either from choice or necessity, fit or no fit. This is a wrong with two sides. It is an injustice to the buyer and an injury to the maker. Dealers should be compelled to fit every pair of corsets to the figure as carefully and satisfactorily as milliners hosiers, and merchants fit bonnets, gloves, shoes, and suits. Later in the Jennings article, she also says, Not one but a dozen girls have the same waist measure, are fitted perfectly to make what is called the popular size. Then she goes on to the topic of corset pattern creation, where she says, in this garb, she is measured. In an incredibly short time, the corset is drafted, cut, stitched, stripped, boned, finished, and tried on. The forewoman laces it. The designers and cutters take turns on their knees before the model, pins in their mouths and scissors, chalk, and inch measures at hand. The garment is studied from every point of view standing, sitting, bending, and walking. Gores are taken in and out, stays are stiffened, reduced, or multiplied, according to the requirements, steels are bent and shaped for support or suppression. Suppose, for example, the model is a trim little woman with a long, slender waist, 34 bust, 37 hips, and 23 waist. Before the corset, made and fitted to her figure, is accepted, it is tried on three other models of the same proportions to see that it fits them accurately. This is called verifying a fit. Now, there may be 100 girls in the factory, all with the number 23 waist, but to suppose that this model corset will fit them all is an absurdity. Nature never duplicates her handiwork. Jennings makes some really important points here. I see a lot of people at fairs and conventions deciding to try a corset from a vendor. These off-the-rack corsets are made for what Jennings might refer to as popular sizes. They are intended to fit as many people as possible. In reality, they fit a decent proportion of the population, moderately well. However, people with slightly more unique body types, I say this as an owner of a rather unique body type, 
might find these corsets not only doing an ill job at shaping their bodies, but also potentially painful. By the late 19th and early 20th centuries, there was an ever-growing selection of corsets to choose from. There are tons of advertisements for corsets of the era, all describing how their corsets would fit. Some did use fairly generic language, but other ads could get quite specific. There are mentions of long and short waists, full, slight, stout, and well-developed figures, low, medium, and high busts, as well as medium hips. The list of descriptions just goes on and on. To make sure that the perfect fit is achieved, I cannot overstress the importance of mock-ups. If you are interested in making a corset, the one piece of advice I hope everyone takes into account is the necessity of mock-ups. Being able to wear the garment around for a while and notice the possible developments of hot spots, rubbing, or irritation can make a world of difference. In the mock-up I am currently making, for example, I was able to learn that the bottom edge is going to need to be modified. While the circumference is actually perfect, its distribution is not. It is ever so slightly too snug on the back half while being slightly too loose over the belly. So, in the next mock-up, I will be expanding the back two cores just a little bit while trimming down the panels in the front slightly to redistribute the volume of the bottom half of the corset. Now Jennings' hypothetical girl reinforces the importance of mock-ups. The girl tries on a mock-up under intense scrutiny. Just as she walks, sits, and bends in the mock-up, so do I. There is some strutting in front of mirrors, sitting in hard and plush chairs. In general, I just live in the corset for a while. This includes time for just lounging and time for actively living. Where I might try doing some housework or dancing, I'm really making sure I can move comfortably. Once I have done this for a few hours, then I modify where needed and start the second mock-up. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> second mock-up. Don't be averse to making multiple mock-ups. They can really, really help achieve comfort and support in a way that might surprise you when properly fitted. So, here it is. You can actually, I'll insert a clip and you can watch me put it on. Uh, a couple things to note on this. Uh, first of all, I am wearing a bra underneath this at the moment, and that is because this bust allotment is far too small for what I need, and it's not placed quite where I need it. This bra is actually a couple cup sizes too small and comes up quite high, so I am quite compressed right now. So I'm definitely going to make a second mock-up, and in that second mock-up, uh, one of the main things that I need to alter is going to be where the bust expansion starts. For me, in this corset, it starts a little bit too low. It looks filled up at the bottom of this expansion point now, but that's actually because of the bra I'm wearing underneath it. Not normally. I tried this on without the bra, and it definitely started too low, so I need to raise that up about three quarters of an inch, and I need to raise the entire thing up, in general, about an inch and a half in order to make sure that the bust has enough support where I need it, because as it stands right now, without a bra, if I turn sideways in it, there's just like a flat line where my bust spills out about an inch and a half forward in front of the bra, where there is lots of overflow. <laughs> so, need to modify that. Um, also, the bottom of this corset comes down just a little lower than I like. It digs into my lap slightly, so I want to just bring that bottom edge up about an inch and a half. That's why I actually have the chalk lines on my corset right now, which you can see as I put it on, um, to indicate the new height that I want that to go to. 
Um, other than that, everything went really well with this corset, but I am going to insert a waist tape. Because of the way that these pieces are cut, um, there is some stretch in them, and that is intended based on the grain that is indicated on the pattern of the way in which you're supposed to align the pieces when you cut them. Uh, but that results in some minor stretching at the waist. So I'm going to insert a waist tape when I make my next mock-up, just to make sure the waist stays where it's supposed to. At this point, it has expanded a little over an inch. So I want to try it with the reduced weight size and make sure I'm still comfortable in it. As it stands right now, it's incredibly comfortable. It's not super tight at the waist. I can move, I can bend, like not a whole lot, but it's made out of whale boning, which is way more flexible than like the steel bone corsets that I am usually used to when I wear a corset. Um, so I'm really appreciating the flexibility that the synthetic whalebone provides. There is extra space at the hip and a little extra space at the bust, which I really like just because it makes things easier to move. I'm probably going to insert an additional piece of boning around the front or around the bust just because I don't feel like I'm getting quite enough support because the boning in the front is fairly minimal. So I'll change that up, see how that fits in my next mock-up. I will be giving you all the details on how I modified this corset in part two of this video, which will come out not next week, but the week afterwards, where I make the final version of this corset. Hopefully I'll only need one more mock-up between this version and that version. We will see just how frantically I am sewing. <laughs> Next week instead, we're actually going to be talking about corsets more generally, uh, my personal experience with corsets, as well as the women who used to wore them in wore them, wear them in the Victorian ages and how they were similar and different from us. So if you have any questions about anything that falls in that very broad range of topics, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below, and I will do my best to answer your questions in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up, um, possibly even subscribing to my channel if you are interested in those future videos so that you can find out when those come out. Um, yeah, I hope you all have a lovely day.